Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Madam Chair, for being here. Madam Chair, I, I will tell you, I am shocked, shocked, I tell you, that you are actually meeting with the President <laughs> or the Secretary of the Treasury or anyone else. You should be sitting in a closet making these decisions on your own. I am personally shocked that you or anyone else would care about growing income inequality. What a terrible, terrible thing to care about. By the way, my schedule is private. What I say in meetings is private with my constituents, with people I don't agree with, with people I agree with. If you open that door, I challenge all my colleagues, Democrat and Republican, to do the same. Open every meeting you have with everyone, including lobbyists. By the way, Madam Chair, have you donated any money to a member of Congress? No. Has the banks donated any money to the member of Congress, to your knowledge? I'm assuming they have. I think they have. <laughs> By the way, Madam Chair, I, I hope I'm on your Christmas card list because I would be very offended if I don't get a Christmas card. With all of that nonsense aside, all of that hypocrisy aside, that doesn't mean that I agree with you on everything. I can't tell you how strongly I disagree with the Fed's recent decision to take municipal bonds and declare them not high quality liquid assets. They are still the safest investment in this country. And to tell banks they can't hold them as capital needs other than the risky ones. Of course there are some risky munis. Most of them are safe. To tell them not, it may as well tell those banks they should take their cash and stuff it in a mattress. That's the only safer place for investment. But it's not a question of safe, it's a question of liquid and how rapidly these assets can be converted into cash. They have never been a problem. And what this does is simply drive up cost to taxpayers and simultaneously reduce investment in economic enhancements. That's what minis are used for. It is a short-sighted, wrong policy, in my opinion, even though I'm not on your dance card for many different things. I also want to talk a minute about too big to fail. The FDIC, and you both basically said the last, the second, not the first, the second submission of these living wills weren't adequate. Yet the FDIC was pretty clear about it. I want to read a copy. In fact, I'd like to uh, submit a copy of, their, of the uh, comments from Vice Chairman Honig for the record. But in his comments, he said, the plans provide no credible or clear path through bankruptcy that doesn't require unrealistic assumptions and direct or indirect public support. And on and on and on. My time is running out. I want to get to one simple question. You said earlier, you're going to give them a third try. We won't know the results of that third try. For give or take a year from now, maybe longer. If they don't meet your requirements at the third try, what you said is, well, I wrote it down here somewhere, something along the lines is you would, you'd be upset. You'd say, oh my goodness, you failed. Honestly, if my mother or my teacher or my priest told me, if you do those terrible things, I would be very disappointed. I, would, I don't need to tell you, but when I was... Hey irresponsible, it didn't much matter. What are you going to do if you Congressman, I said we would find the What plans. does that mean? We will find them to be not credible if we do not see progress that what we does that have mean? asked. What is the practical if result we, of finding them not credible? If we find them not credible, we then, along with the FDIC, are, would be in a position to impose additional capital and liquidity and other requirements you increase on capital these requirements? firms. They would then would you have, break them up? They would then have two years to, uh, I believe it's two years to show us that they had made changes that we would then have so to find. So five years after Dodd Frank, we would then have to they find. They still have potentially three years before there's any serious consequences to prove to you that they no longer offer a threat to the entire U.S. economic system. We have put in place much higher capital standards and liquidity standards. But they have been standards. found insufficient by virtually everyone who studies these, except the Fed. Well, we 
we issued a rule about how we would conduct the living will process. The last and line, the last we, line of Mr. Honig's letter says, "In theory, Title I solves too big to fail. However, in practice, it's not the passage of the law; rather, it's implementation that determines whether the issue is resolved." Madam Chair, I well, tell you, we, that it's insufficient at the moment. The time, the time of the gentleman has expired. The